Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Bottomless Coffee Podcast. I'm Jerome Evans, all over the internet at at Jerome T. Evans, and today you are in for it. Now, we talk a lot about values and actions and taking control of our own lives, and today we are talking with someone who has done that in a big way. Our guest today went back to school as an adult to study fashion design in two major cities and has been so successful that within just over a year, he's designed for big names like uh, Lil Nas X and Joe Jonas. And then there's also a super secret celebrity that we may or may not get to talk about. Um, I'm excited to find out. I'll ask. Uh, But it is my honor to introduce you all to my amazing friend and all around beautiful human and celebrity fashion designer, William Ramser. Hey, William. Yay. Hi, Jerome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me on. (laughs) It is my absolute pleasure. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled for your success. And I'm so proud of you. Um, you. Yeah. So I, we've been friends for a while. Um, Spoiler alert. It's like over 10 years now. So I don't want you to feel your age. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, I like Google and Google Photos will like categorize your friends' photos by face, oh, you know? Fabulous. So I clicked on your face this morning and I scrolled all the way down to 2010. And oh in those photos, you are literally in clothes that you made yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, I so, like, how long have those... you been doing this? <laughs> um, yeah, I have been making clothes since. When we met, it was probably about 2009, 2010. Um, I might say that I've been making good clothes for not as long as that, maybe 2017. <laughs> but we did have a lot okay. of fun back then, um, throwing all sorts of crazy stuff on our bodies. And I don't know. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't think what we were wearing was fantastic, but I will give us credit. I think we were always like pushing the envelope and trying something mm. new. And um, it, we grew up in Atlanta, um, which... Yeah. It was very, like, preppy, very, like, polo, Abercrombie, which, like, no shade. That's just not really, like, exactly who I was, what I was feeling at the time. Yeah. So I love to, like, go to the bar in, like, literal garbage that we would find around. And, like, (laughs) (laughs) I love this idea that everyone was so obsessed with being, like, perfect and clean and manicured and every hair was in place. And I would literally put, like, paint on my face or, like, dirt and just go out being, like, a maniac, kind of. I don't know how it was received, but I just liked making people feel a little uncomfortable with fashion and kind of um, stirring the pot a little. Yeah, uh, I think you did do that. Um, And and I have the photos to prove it. But you mentioned something like, I think you said good design in 2017. And like, what is the what is the distinction for you? Because from what I'm hearing, as I'm hearing you described it, you know, you were very successful and what you set out to do pre-2017. So, like, That's what true. changed for you? I guess I, um, yeah, I think you're right. Like, one thing I love about design and about expression and clothing is that it really can be anything. And if you are wearing a shirt that you made for free or a shirt that you spend $500 on, yeah, as long as it makes you feel good, I think that's really the goal. And so, yeah, I, I was just, you know... I think I started to kind of actually learn how to sew and kind of refine maybe some taste levels when I got a little bit older. But I do okay. think like what we set out to do, we accomplished. I'll never forget, I was at a bar and I was like trying to be all flirty with this guy. And he looks at me <laughs> and he goes, I don't talk to trash. And I was like, oh my God, that's like, so rude. And I realized I was wearing a shirt that I had made from like a garbage bag. And I was like, oh. okay, <laughs> maybe there's some truth in that. I like, but, um, was he flirting? Is he funny? Is he single? <laughs> I was flirting. I don't think he was flirting. But, um, well, he, made he tells point. a good joke. <laughs> Clever. Yeah, looking back, a devastating like, okay. joke. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So you mentioned that you learned to sew. So, so, so you're saying, like, when, back in the day when we were doing what we were doing. You had a sewing machine in there, but you didn't really yes. think that you knew how to sew. Like looking back in hindsight, you're like, I don't have those right. skills. You do you feel like you've really skilled up since then? 
Absolutely, yeah. I definitely enjoyed sewing at the time, and I lived with um, this beautiful, beautiful trans woman who who also did drag. Her name was Jasmine, and she would make these oh, yeah. cool costumes, and I would sit with her and watch her sew, and I would always try to, like, make something to, like, go side by side with her, like, to the bar. Um, but I think it wasn't until la much, much later. I moved to New York. I kind of lost all thought about being a, a sewing designer, and... Hmm. Um, I just, it was actually living in San Francisco at the time. I was trying to make myself a Halloween costume and I brought my sewing machine out, dusted it off. And I was like, okay, this is actually kind of fun. And I, from there, just started learning a lot on YouTube, which is like a great resource. Anything you want to <laughs> learn how to do, you can learn on YouTube. And I was, you know, how do you do this kind of zipper? How do you do this kind of seam? I really started to have a lot of fun with it. And yeah. um, I, got to this kind of crossroads where my roommates were moving out. They were moving to Portland and I really like, wanted to take the summer to just be a crazy person and move to Berlin and like try to just oh. backpack all over the world, which would have been great. And then the other, the like angel on my shoulder was like, maybe you should get your life together and like figure out <laughs> like what it is that might bring you a little more happiness in the long run. So I ended up, that's when I decided to go to school for fashion design. And, really? Uh, okay. I went in thinking like, oh, I know everything about sewing, and I got there and I was like, okay, I don't know anything. Like, let's let's learn. There was there was some humility that happened when you when a you got bit, there. Yeah. So I and this is interesting because we I talk to a lot of people, and I a lot of times I'm like, how did you get to where you are? You know, and sure. some people are like, I knew right off the womb that I wanted to be a celebrity fashion designer. <laughs> Or mm -hmm. what have you. But it sounds like maybe you've landed in a place almost like, you're like, oh, yeah, I would love to be a celebrity fashion designer. But that's not actually why I left Atlanta. And that's not why I left uh, New York. I left, like, for me. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's very, very true. I mean, I have always enjoyed clothing, enjoyed fashion. But I've never, like, I've never been super obsessed with, like, these big fashion labels. And I sort of don't know as much as I wish I did about like the history of fashion. And, you know, I think for me, mm. it was more about expression and about finding a way to um, kind of show my queer identity through the clothes that I wore. But I never really considered it to be something that I wanted to do for a living. In fact, when I lived in Atlanta and even earlier, I really wanted to be in, in musical theater and I went to school for musical theater originally. Oh, yeah. And that um, just, I decided not to continue pursuing that. But yeah, I kind of am jealous of these people that um, were like, oh, when I was one years old, I was really into fashion design. And I'm like, that wasn't necessarily me, but I'm very happy with how I how it worked out. Um, one hundred percent. And I do I do distinguish between being interested in it professionally and just being interested in it in general, since I do have the receipts showing that you were clearly very interested <laughs> in it, at least as far back as 2010. Um, that's true. Yeah. Now let's, I guess we should talk a little bit about the work that has gone in to getting you to where you are today, because even though this wasn't like an articulated goal that you set for yourself, celebrity fashion design in particular, mm -hmm. like, you know, at this point, William, people are going to want to be you, this is, which is neat <laughs> um, <laughs> and like bizarre. Um, uh, and I think to a lot of people it's going to look like overnight success um but like you mentioned you went to school you realized that you didn't actually know how to sew uh and so it yeah. took like years and years of work so can you like just talk us through um yeah like the formal process that got you to where you are absolutely yeah i really um i have been in school for quite a while i was going to school so when i decided to go back to school for fashion design because i actually was not a very great high school student. I wasn't a very, um, I don't know. I didn't do super well in college either. And I've actually dropped out oh. of three colleges at this point. Oh, no. <laughs> so I am still <laughs> on track to get my associate's degree at 32 years old, which is fine. Okay. Um, but I went to school at City College in San Francisco for fashion design. And it was a great program. It was a really nice way to uh, kind of have an introduction to the industry. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I was actually almost done with this two-year program in 2020 when everything shut down. All of our classes got canceled oh. because of the pandemic. 
So I very quickly um, decided that I was going to spend a lot of quarantine in, in Los Angeles, which is where I am now. Yeah. Because I was dating my boyfriend at the time, uh, long distance, and then we decided to quarantine together and move in together. So when that happened, I had to figure out a school in LA that I could finish at. So I really only had like one more semester left of the program. Oh. And I found this school called Los Angeles Trade Technical College. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. L A T T C. Okay. <laughs> and um. <laughs> I was Lattic. like, oh, this is great. I can finish the program here at Trade Tech. And they were like, oh, no, you have to start from the beginning of the program. You have to start <gasps> at square one. And I was all like frustrated about it at the time. Uh, yeah. um, but then I realized it's actually a much more intense program. And the units are five instead of three. So they really wanted you to have like the full foundation of it. Um, and there were okay. options to like test out of it, some of the classes. But since it was online they weren't offering that that situation uh, so i started this program from the beginning i had to do another two years and it kind of worked out really well i know i mean looking <laughs> back during, sure but at the time looking back <laughs> at the time it yeah. was really daunting but then i started to realize yeah. like oh these these programs are like kicking my butt and the classes were very hard i don't um i don't know how some people did them online um, and I don't know how people did them if they've like never sewn before. So I actually felt like I had a good advantage coming in with some knowledge, but I still was able to pick up a lot of things from it. And I think having that, like taking the class twice, I was able to take a lot more out of it the second time around. Yeah. So I had to do all the intro to sewing classes. We had to do like a sketching class. Um, and two years later, our senior senior showcase was like the final semester of the program and we had to do something we call gold thimble and it's um it's a runway show and also a competition so it's very okay. intense very high pressure um we had to do eight categories so it was like children's wear swimwear athleisure avant-garde like all these different categories in the industry oh. to really test us i think and try to push us in different directions because I think a lot of people come into fashion design school to be a designer. They're going to have their own label and they were like, that's mm -hmm. cute, but like, let's help you find where in this industry might suit you best. And that might be a pattern maker or that might be a grader or like a seamstress, you know? So there's so many different um, places you could land. And um, that was a really, really hard process doing that gold thimble, but it was really fun oh, because we had a runway you, show. How'd you do? I did really well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you did? I did. Yay. I was really lucky. I, I won um, first place in four of the categories and yes. um, and second place in three of them. So I won a total of seven. Oh, my gosh. Which I'm like extreme. I'm like blushing. I really hate like <laughs> I feel very awkward um, when it feels like I'm bragging or talking about things I've accomplished. But it, it is nice. It does oh. feel very good to put a lot of effort into something and then be rewarded for that. So I'm very, I'm very happy to uh brag on you i'm like what do you mean lucky luckily to have won like you yeah. <laughs> you went to school several times <laughs> that's true i guess it wasn't really luck i did put a lot of hard work into it and it yeah 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 um okay so wow there were seven categories you said and so there you... was eight categories oh so one escaped you <laughs> you know what's really funny too the one that i didn't win anything in was menswear and Stop that's it. kind of like my thing. Like that's sort of what I like to do. If you'd asked me like the day before, like which one do you really want to win? I would have said menswear. And I... Yeah. But it's okay. I think everyone did a really good job with that category and had fun with it. Yeah. So. Well, you know, the school is there to point yeah. you in the direction you need to go. You could have been a pattern maker. You could have... Exactly. Exactly. So not menswear, which is fine because I'm actually don't really like that. I don't really want to use that term in my vocabulary anyway, because I think like mm. clothing really doesn't need to be gendered. And I think um, actually looking at it, like maybe the clothes that I made for menswear might have been a little too queer or a little like for the the judges. I oh, don't interesting. Know. Sure. Not sure. that anything well, is you too know. queer, but yeah. yeah. You, when you're at home with your seven awards, you can think on it. <laughs> you can think <laughs> exactly. about the one that got away. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, you went to school. This was during COVID, but also um, back as an adult, you know, you didn't mm -hmm. really, you know, you, you, you said you didn't really like care for school the first time. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but I, I find that as I get older, I have like more and more to do. Um, mm-hmm. So was it difficult for you to go back to school as an adult while balancing, you know, the boyfriend and yeah. the rent and what have you? Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing we take for granted as kids is like, you don't really have to pay rent. You can live with your parents. You don't necessarily have to have a job. I mean, that's a very lucky, privileged way to go to college. But um, luckily, when I was, you know, in high school, I didn't have to worry about all that stuff. Um, So going back as an adult, it was harder because it's like balancing a full time school schedule with a full time job with trying to do, you know, social activities and have a a partner. Mm -hmm. It's just um, it's a lot to balance. But I think with age comes a little more maturity. And I I was able to work a lot harder because. I wasn't doing it for my parents. I wasn't doing it even for the grade, really. I was just doing it for myself. This is something that I want to learn for me and nobody else. So I think it was easier to put 100% into it. And I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't trying to um, prove anything to anybody except to myself. So I I think I took a lot more out of it. But then you did. (laughs) Well, Like I came for me and on the way, I came for everybody. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, I'm glad that I took the time. And I actually don't think I would have been as successful if I'd gone when I was 18 or 19, because I just was too oh. distracted. I think I, I, I wouldn't have had the the drive to really put in the effort when I was that age. I was just wanting to do everything and party and have fun and be a crazy, crazy kid. You know, this, I wasn't going to ask you this, but you brought it up. You were in New York. You said uh, your roommates moved uh, away and you had a yeah. thought. You're like, maybe I need to get my life together or something. Um, is the same, is it that thought? Was that little itsy bitsy baby thought at the time? Did that just like stick with you the whole time through your time in San Francisco and then your time in LA and then now? Or has it evolved okay. and become something different over time? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I guess that's not the best way to put it because I I think whatever you're doing is is great for whatever age you are. You know, I don't I think mm. there was just always kind of a guilt with me because all my friends that I went to high school with had like graduated and were like having kids and moved into houses and I was like, "Oh, I'm still kind of just like going to the bars." And I think there's nothing wrong with that, but for me I was feeling like a little unfulfilled. I was feeling like I wasn't sort of reaching the right potential. Thing. And yeah. Being creative has always been really important to me. So I didn't feel like I had a very good creative outlet at the time. Mm. And I really just was hoping to hone that into something that in my mind was productive. And that can mean different things to everybody. Um, And certainly not like I didn't feel the pressure to like be a doctor or a lawyer like that. It was always a creative path for me, but I still wanted to be doing something that I could feel proud of or at least give back to the to the community in some ways. So oh, I'm glad I felt you like I was felt sort of that and followed yeah, it, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that you were able to follow it. Cause I think a lot of people probably do have that same sensation, but they're like, Oh, I don't know how, or I don't have the means or I can't figure out the path. And so, uh, yeah. Congratulations. William. Thank you. And I do yes. think it's a little daunting to go back to school when you're a little older and, Especially once the classes came back to in person, I looked like everyone's father. Like it's all these like eighteen year olds <laughs> and me, and I was a little self conscious about it at first. Um, someone said to, I had to mention like, oh, a lot of my inspiration comes from the '90s. I love like Spice Girls and TLC and that silhouette. And they were like, oh, I love the '90s, but I was born in the 2000s. And I was like, so <laughs> no. Um, but then by the end of it, like I think they thought I was like the coolest guy, you know. So like I think that yeah. sort of that shame of being the older one, it's like, who cares? You know, you go when it's right for you to go. Yeah. Shame gets in the way, you know, find the goal. Yeah. And don't, don't let anything get in your way of what you want to do to feel fulfilled and to feel like you're thriving for yourself. And especially not some kids. (laughs) Yeah. Right. What do they know? (laughs) Well, okay. Let's take a, a coffee break. Um, and then I want to dig in a little bit more into like actual celebrity design and what have you. Great. Um, okay. BRB everybody Perfect. with uh, Ram Slam, William Ramser. 
at Ramslam on social media. Yes. Okay, we are back with celebrity designer William Ramser at Ramslam on social media. And we are here to talk about celebrity design specifically. I want to get into, I was going to say brass tacks, but I guess it's like sequins and rhinestones for you. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of so rhinestones. Like, what, uh, what makes for a celebrity designer? You know what I mean? Like, why did yeah. people start coming to you or how did this happen? Yeah, so um, I have been working for about a year uh, with a designer in LA. His name's Michael No, N-G-O, and he's fantastic. I've actually was like kind of a fan of his for a really long time. He designs for like Gaga and Ariana Grande and like every pop girl that you might be obsessed with. So I was wow. following him on social media and just reached out like, a crazy person like hey i just moved to la like if you ever need help with anything uh, like a dm know. and he i slid into his dms <laughs> professionally oh and i just said oh i'm in school at this uh at trade tech and i'm i'd love to be you know if you're doing internships or anything and he actually responded and said oh that's awesome like it was still very like midway through i mean we're still midway through the pandemic but he, we, it was a little bit mm. when like pre-vaccine people weren't really hanging out so he said um i'm a little cautious about who's around me right now but i'd love to let you know if there's anything that i need help with and i was like okay cool didn't hear from him for a really long time and then months later he was like hey actually i do have a big project that i could use some help for if you're able to come in like tomorrow it was like very much like oh my gosh. drop everything <laughs> So I went in, I was so nervous and worked on this project. It was like a week long. We had to make 18 Playboy Bunny inspired outfits for this party. It was actually in Atlanta and oh. it was so, so stressful, but so fun. And everyone that was there was really, really nice. Um, oh and gosh. then he was like, actually, what are you doing next Monday? Like, can you come by? So I guess I got the job and I, I worked for him like pretty much not full time, but like pretty regularly while I was in school. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really awesome way to learn kind of the ins and outs of the performance, like entertainment costume world, yeah. which was actually talking about like falling into a, a, a situation that I wasn't expecting. I never would have thought that I was doing like music videos and live performance. I always sort of imagined myself doing more ready to wear. So okay. it was fun to kind of see how you communicate with the stylists and you know um all the materials that they use that look really good on stage all these things that i was learning i think really helped me and um yeah yeah we um we did like so many fun mind-blowing projects and it was always i couldn't really take credit for them because i was just helping to sew but it was fun right. the longer that i was there i got a little bit more responsibilities a little more trust and um he's actually become a really good friend of mine so that was a really oh. great way to get my foot in the door. Yeah. And then um, I let me ask you a quick kind of question. Yeah. A quick Please. question, just to, just to set the scene. So mm -hmm. it's like your your first project. You said eighteen Playboy Bunny outfits yeah. in a week. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. How many pe other people were there sewing for that week? There were three other people so a total okay. of four of us yeah michael does okay. all the designing and he sews when he needs to but usually we sew for him the luxury okay. but <laughs> well, um yes yeah, so it's still like what like these... five outfits to sew in a week yeah it was a lot it was a lot and that okay that, so that is a lot i wasn't game. sure <laughs> I'm like yeah. does that count as a lot that is that like a lot <laughs> Okay. But yeah, it's um, very interesting with this this world. It'll be like the deadline is tomorrow. Like they'll ask yeah. you, you have to make it in a day or two. It's very fast, and I don't quite understand why. Like we were doing a bunch of stuff for Coachella, and they were making all these changes and thoughts and ideas, and I was like, you know, the show's in two days. Like we have, <laughs> it just doesn't. Yeah. I don't understand why it's always so last minute, but that's just how the industry is, I guess, and you have to adjust. And. You were thinking about going into ready to wear, um, mm -hmm. in the in the before times, and so I imagine with uh, 
these custom designs that are being that are coming in are you getting measurements and everything yeah. in advance because most of my um i'm gonna admit this to you most of my experience with this industry mm-hmm. comes from like uh america's sex top model or mm-hmm. uh, project runway or rupaul's right, drag right, race right. and so and there's always yeah. that moment where like the dress doesn't fit you know <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, the chaos that you see on Project Runway is very real in the industry. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're all okay. running around. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good question because a lot of people think like, oh, you made this outfit for so and so. Like, what were they like? Oh, I don't meet them. Like, they're nowhere near mm. nearby. So they send us their measurements. We make it as best we can to fit those those measurements, and then we send them to set or to the performance. And there's always someone there that's a a tailor, and they will do the fitting. And then make it fit how it needs to be fit. Uh, and I always thought kind of like doing alterations was a negative thing, but it actually happens probably a hundred percent of the time. Something needs to be like tweaked or fit to the yeah. to the client. Yeah. Um. So I've been doing some of those like onset tailoring jobs too, um, which oh. has been really fun, and that has been um, awesome as well. I've been doing okay. tailoring for like. Yeah, we need to go back. <laughs> I was I was just in, I had interrupted you before, but I was about to interrupt you again. And so uh, you, do. you can finish your thought. Okay. Well, you had you'd taken us from the Playboy Bunnies um and with work with Michael. Michael's a friend now. Mm-hmm. And then it yeah. sounded like you transitioned a little bit into um another direction, maybe doing stuff on your own or or something. Yeah. I didn't want to yeah, lose so, the train of thought. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so while I was working with Michael No. I started to get these jobs where I could do um, projects on my own or people would ask me to make like a custom outfit for somebody. So I was trying to balance working with him, being in school, doing these custom projects. And then on top of that, I started getting asked to do these onset alteration and tailoring jobs that I um, got recommended through a girl that worked for Michael as well. And the first project we did was making costumes for Bruno Mars. He just did a Vegas show. So I made like cool. eight pairs of pants um, and some jackets for the Bruno Mars show, which was really cool. Um, and then this stylist, or actually it was not the stylist. He's like, um, he's a tailor as well. He asked hmm. me to do a few more projects. He works for Megan the Stallion a lot. So I got to tailor the dress she wore to the Oscars, which was really wild. It was oh my gosh. massive. And I'm literally like covered in it, trying to like sew all these things. And so to be like basically <laughs> wearing the dress, I didn't wear the dress, but, and then to see it yeah. like on the red carpet the next day, it's just mind blowing. Um, so yeah, I got to start doing a lot more projects on my own, um, sort of unrelated to the work that I was doing with Michael. And then I became friends with um, my friend Vincent. He has a company called Disco Daddy. And everything he makes okay. is completely rhinestone from head to toe. It's stunning and extremely mm. expensive. So he has, in the last year or two, just exploded. And, like, every client is an A-list star. It's just wild. He's doing really, really well. So Good. he and I linked up, and I've been doing some sewing for him for a while. And then... You're doing a lot of sewing. Um, it's a lot of sewing happening. A lot of sewing. These poor little fingers. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> he and I started to become closer, and he got asked to do a project for Lil Nas. That's um, how this project came to be. He was asked to design something for his birthday party, and he said, um, I'd love to help. I don't sew, really. Like, he, he, does, he doesn't make clothes. He just stones them. Mm. So he said, how would, you be, how would you feel about me collaborating with another designer that I'm friends with, um, and uh-huh. we can come up with something together? So that's how I got to meet um, the stylist for Lil Nas X. Her name's Hodo, and she's fantastic. And yeah, Vincent and I cool. designed this outfit um, for Lil Nas, and it was like completely mind blowing. It was the first time that I'd been able to like put my labels in clothes that I was putting on a celebrity, and the first time that I could really like take credit and tag myself in them um, after yeah. like a year and a half. So that was a big moment, and oh my we had a lot of fun. And it was just really, really, really insane. And actually, they invited us to the party. So I got to meet him and, like, see him all night wearing these clothes that I made. What? It was, truly, <laughs> it was really, really special. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. just wild. And I think it was, like, one of the few opportunities that I would actually 
be in person with the celebrity that I'm making clothes for. So that was yeah. really fun and really nice of them to invite us. Oh, um, so that project was that Thanks. project was just so special and so mind blowing. Um, but you know, going back to like the difference between celebrity design and like ready to wear, mm. it's like the thing that's a tiny bit frustrating about it is that you have to kind of check like all these boxes. It has to please the client, but it also has to please like the stylist and then the management and then the record label. And so you're basically ah. taking like everyone's ideas and trying to mold them into something that is still true to your aesthetic and still has your thumbprint on it. So like yeah. for that project, for example, we sketched all these things, had all these ideas. And then she was like, I love these. I love these. I love these. He really wants to be a football player. And I was like, <laughs> you could have saved us like five hours by just saying that. <laughs> so in the end, it was like, how do you take this concept that's been done to death and still kind of make it fresh? So we put kind of like a 70s twist on it and gave them like I made these little like vintage football shorts. And he actually had a whole outfit underneath that he didn't take. Uh, he didn't reveal oh. to. And that was kind of like, oh, and then like, you know, he'll want a swimsuit for like if he decides to get in the pool. And we're like, what pool? Like, it's just, there's uh, all sure. these things you have to kind of. <laughs> but, uh, um, okay. It's Go just ahead. fun. There's just a little no, aside. I, mean, I remember in Atlanta when we were, <laughs> we were hanging out, I remember I would leave the house not really knowing where the day was going to take me, you know, and I would, mm -hmm. I would sometimes wear a Speedo. Just in case, you know, so I am, Just I'm with case. Lil Nas X on this one. <laughs> you never know when there's going to be a pool. That's very you Atlanta. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Have so a little bag. You with, mentioned like, every occasion. You yeah. yeah. <laughs> bunch of gay boys, you know, I don't know why we didn't just carry a purse. <laughs> uh, I mean, it would have been a fish up. Um, a very exactly. large purse. Okay. 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 Yeah. But you mentioned, um, staying true to yourself. Um, in these mm. designs while also balancing out the interests of the various other stakeholders that are involved. So like, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about, um, do you like, do you have, have you articulated a design philosophy or is it okay. like, 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 yeah. Like what's, what's the, what's the Ram slam look or whatever, you know? You got you. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I touched on it earlier. I love, like a 90s aesthetic. I love TLC. I love like a big baggy mm. pant and like a tiny little like top or like a little crop top. I think my aesthetic when it comes to like streetwear, which is something I really love to do, not menswear apparently, but just gender neutral streetwear. <laughs> I love the like yeah. utilitarian aesthetic. I love like pockets and straps and I love to be kind of um, industrial with it. Um, but I think one thing I'm learning is that you really have to be flexible because every single project is so different. So mm. it is hard. I, you know, with this program I did, I had to do an evening gown and I thought, that's not me at all. Like, I, I've never made a gown. I've never, like, really um, thought about making gowns. So how can I make a gown and still put, like, Ram Slam into it? I ended up doing, yeah. like, a leather bustier and it had this cool leather belt that hung um, and I actually, that was one of the ones that I won first place for. So I think that was a lesson in taking something that I wasn't very familiar with or something that actually really scared me and, mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, I can do this in my own way. And I think the fact that I did it slightly different than everyone else might've set me apart. So that was a lesson, like, don't run from something just because it feels unfamiliar instead, like, yeah. how can I do it in the way that I feel comfortable with? Absolutely. So. And I feel as though as a future potential celebrity client that I want you to embrace those things that make you uncomfortable because those are like, those are yeah. what's going to be different from what other people have already done. You know, a hundred percent. I agree with you. And I think people, yeah, I think, um, going back to that, like my design philosophy, which I can, I think I can articulate better than my aesthetic because sure. that keeps evolving. But I think my biggest thing is I just want you to wear something that makes you feel comfortable and also kind of expresses yourself and pushes the boundaries of like, maybe you shouldn't be wearing a trash bag to the gay bar, but you know what? Like if it makes you feel good, it makes you feel confident. I think that's, what's really mm -hmm. important. And I am extremely inspired by the queer community more so even than like big fashion labels. I've always been really inspired by like drag queens and club kids and just this like fearlessness of wearing something that may be completely taboo, but you're wearing it in a way that makes you feel very um, 
true to who you are and it expresses your queer identity. I've always really yeah. been drawn to that. I'm hearing uh, that you want people to feel like maybe empowered to push right. the boundaries um, that they are, what, whatever those boundaries may be. And I think that's really magical. Uh, and yeah. I love it. And if, you know, and if it's all wrong, you can tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's exactly it. I think it's just about taking risks and having fun. I think life is short. And if you, you can just have fun with what you wear, um, I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, you've mentioned some amazing moments. Um, you mentioned Lil Nas X. You mentioned even just being asked. Uh, to to help collaborate <laughs> yeah. as being like a proud moment, um, and I know you're just starting out, but like, what are do you have other super proud moments that you'd like to share? And if you could set the scene for us, I would love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, after that Lil Nas project, Vincent and I did another project together uh, for Joe Jonas, which is kind of funny. I mean, like, I don't, I'm not extremely familiar with the Jonas Brothers, but they've always been like a cultural. Yeah, moment been, like, and there. someone that I've been yeah. aware of. So that was a very silly, <laughs> fun moment. But it was, um, it, we got asked to make like a, a classic trouser and vest. And then Disco Daddy did his like beautiful rhinestone um, swirl, like this gorgeous technique on it. And that hmm. was like one of the first projects that I did where I really felt like I got this. Like, this is something that I feel really comfortable with. I mention a lot like feeling. A lot of stress with these projects but this one in particular i was just like no stress like this is very yeah. in my wheelhouse this is something i feel confident with and i felt super proud like oh all the time that i've spent going to school really prepared me for this moment and i it was like the first time that i was like let's do this let's make an outfit for jonas brother and like i i really enjoyed that process a lot um you know yay another i am very proud of the secret project that we can't talk about but i will say okay. i um <laughs> <laughs> it it was um, possibly like the biggest moment in my career so far, and I wish I could say more. Yeah. But I, I will say like in contrast to that Joe Jonas project, I was like a chaotic disaster, stress ball the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I told you earlier, I swear it like took days off my life because I was just so stressed. But I got it done. I was very proud of myself for getting it done. Yes, and um, it's actually funny they called me and asked if I would do this project for this artist and I said no I'm sorry I can't do it and I hung up because I was terrified I was so scared and <laughs> I was like what did I just say no to like I should do this yeah. I had a full pe I was literally on the street walking to get a haircut and I having like yeah. a crisis breakdown <laughs> on the sidewalk and I said okay <laughs> you can't say no to this you have to just figure out how to do yeah. it and if mm -hmm. it scares you that's all the more reason to do it and to learn from it so literally like 35 seconds later, I called them and I was like, okay, I'll do, I, I'll move some things around. <laughs> That's like and an 80s movie. <laughs> I know. I just was feeling like, so, it, uh, I'm just very stressed about it. And I, I was having this like imposter syndrome. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this. It's not sure. going to come out very well. Um, and then I finished it and they were really pleased with it. So I think, Good. I think I'm glad I took it. <laughs> I do think it yeah. was like, I need to learn how to manage that stress a little bit more, but it's just part of the industry, I think. Well, I feel as though um, there, there was certainly a lot happening mm -hmm. in that moment, but I really do think that maybe, just maybe that same voice that in New York was saying, all right, William, we got it. We got to get this thing together, uh, you know, that carried you through San Francisco, through L.A., um, was like, hey, you don't get to like <laughs> ba go back, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we are in this together. Um, yeah. This is the call. This is this call is why we we left New York and mm -hmm. have gone through all of these things, and I we just needed a second. I needed yeah. a second, and I needed to like give myself a pep talk. It's just yeah. scary, and it's scary with art. I think because it's so personal and. It's also on display for the world to judge it. And that's a very daunting idea. Like something mm. that you've put so many hours and so much time into for people to just look at it and say, oh, I don't like it. It's like a knife in the heart. So you do have uh. to kind of like, you do have to say like, this is something I'm proud of. It doesn't matter what people think about it. 
and I can do yeah. it. I can do a good job with it, even if I'm scared, which I am I a lot suppose... of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you wear your confidence well. Thank you. Um, I think uh, that's probably also another big difference between just uh, ready to wear and what have you. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're making ready to wear, people are literally going to walk past and just be like, yeah, yeah, nope, nope, all the, like, all yeah. the time, you know? Absolutely. Um, and so maybe it's a bit more personal and you put more of yourself into uh, these custom pieces. Yeah, that's a good point. I think so, too. I think there's, like, um, it's nice to be able to make a line of clothing that you really can take your time with and make something that you feel is very you. But then at the end of the day, like, you don't really have a, a customer for it. You have to kind of fight and figure out who's going to buy these clothes. So the the celebrity client, as stressful as it might be, at least you know at the end of the day, like someone's going to be paying for it. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I do think it's, um, it is a lot more pressure and it's a lot more public and someone's going to be on stage wearing this and people are always going to have their opinions about it. But it's yeah. fun too. It's, it's really fabulous. Oh, it's even from like this great distance between us, I'm, just hearing about it is fun, you know? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, take another quick coffee break with William Ramser at Ram Slam on social media and online at WilliamRamser.com. Be right back. Yay. It was more, I don't know, are we, I don't know, is this part of the, <laughs> do you want this to be part of it? No, no, well, no, it can't, do you want it to be or not want it to be? I don't know. I don't know if that's a secret or not. But, um, okay, then we won't, we won't put it in. <laughs> no, we can. I was asked to do, um, to be like a personal tailor for a celebrity and it would have been a lot of money and it would have been a lot of, it would have been a really cool opportunity, but I realized it would have been almost full-time work for the same artist. And I really want to take this time after school to like do my own thing a little bit more. It would have been a huge mm. time commitment because they're filming all summer and like, it would have been really fun, but it wouldn't have been any creative work, probably. So I did take yeah. note of that. But it's a stylist that I have actually also been a really big fan of because she styles um, Lady Gaga. She styles Billie Eilish. Her name's Marta Del Rio, and she's great. I like want to be. I'm shocked her. to hear that you said no to the stylist. Well, I had Gaga. done a few jobs for her for Billie Eilish. I've been doing like some tailoring jobs. And they sent me like an Uber courier. The courier arrives and oh. there's like 40 garments in this mass. It literally looked like a body bag. And it was like oh all gosh. the clothes that Billie Eilish was wearing on her tour. And I was like, this is very weird to have in my house right now. But <laughs> let me get to work. <laughs> so I did that job for her and she was pleased that I and, and grateful that I took it last minute because the tour was like tomorrow. Like that's always how it works. And then oh. she asked if I would help more. Um, but yeah. I declined. It was also oh, the day busy. after my senior showcase. I was like, I need a break. I need a second. <laughs> like one day. <laughs> Can I have 10 minutes, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I say that I'm like, all I want is a week to do nothing. And then by day two, I'm like, okay, I'm going crazy. I have to be doing something. <laughs> yeah. Your Instagram calling people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. Yay. Well, if you've been tuning in, we are back with William Ramser at Ramslam uh, and www.williamramser.com. And he was just telling us some stories. We got to talking during the coffee break. And I was like, well, if you'll, if you'll sh share the story, people want to hear it. So we're here. But unfortunately, our time is coming to an end. We still have a few minutes, though. Um, and one thing I really like to ask people is like, what's one thing that you want people to take away from our conversation or just, you know, something you want to share with the world? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think going back to the idea of just like continued education, it doesn't have to be a formal mm -hmm. college, but I just think not being afraid to go after something you love to do and really pursuing it with your whole heart. I just think it'll be really rewarding and it is really daunting to go back to school as an adult, but I'm so grateful that I did. And yeah. I think it's, um, it's really special to be constantly learning. And if my high school self yeah. could be hearing me say this, he wouldn't believe it. I mean, I really was like the worst, <laughs> <laughs> but now I just think it's such a gift to, to learn and to be 
curious. Um, so I would just say if there's something you like to do, don't be afraid to do it. And it's never too late. Yeah. I mean, I have, like, my mom shifted careers in her, I won't say her age, but she's, you know, onto something completely different and she's loving it. It's like, I think huh. just, um, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of take a risk. Don't be afraid. Don't be yeah. afraid. And if you ever are feeling afraid, you know, reach out to William for a custom design <laughs> that makes you feel empowered to take on, you know, whatever life is bringing you. <laughs> Absolutely. I think some fun clothes will make all the difference. <laughs> they really do. They really do. Um, I love you so much. I love you This too. has been incredible. I am so thrilled for your success. Uh, you know, if I meet any celebrities in the Midwest, I will give them your information. Yeah, send them my way. Is it... <laughs> Are there? Are you still just accepting DMs? Is that how sure. they need to reach out, or <laughs> what do they need to do? Yeah, I I'm um I have a contact area on my website that you can send me an email. It goes to my um, professional email. Instagram's not a bad mm -hmm. way to be in touch. It's gotten me work in the past, so <laughs> reach out. <laughs> Thank you. Reach out. Reach out and check out uh at Ramzor on. I'm sorry, at Ram Slam on Instagram and see some designs and some cool stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I please like do come by. And thank you so much yeah. for having me on. It's so good to see you and catch up. It's been way too long. It has been a really long time. And I'm time, so proud so. of you too. This is fabulous. Oh, thank you, girl. <laughs> well, don't go anywhere. Uh, but thanks everyone for tuning in. You can connect with William on social media at Ram Slam or online at WilliamRansford.com. <laughs> Please subscribe and give us all five of those stars if you like this episode. And you can stream more episodes and see some pictures uh, at bottlemusscoffeeshow.com. Thanks, all. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>